All right, I got another one for you guys. Going to be talking about the Steam Deck OLED. Uh, it is way more than just a screen swap, and Valve has gone above and beyond to, uh, you know, make some pretty interesting changes to the hardware. Um, some some in terms of performance and a lot in terms of repairability and overall uh, gaming experience on this thing. So uh, let's just del delve into it, and I'll uh, go some go through some of the details here. Uh, so you can see, first of all, uh, the APU is now 6 nanometer for better efficiency. The memory is now 6,400 mega threads a second, improving latency and power management. Uh, the increased thermal module and thickness and performance, as well as fan size, from what I hear, uh, will go a long way towards uh, preventing that thermal throttling that the uh, the original Steam Deck was doing. It would uh, it would spin that fan up real crazy, and all of a sudden you had some uh, some some problems in some of the games. Um, so that that should be gone. Uh, as of this change right here, uh, and then obviously the dis the display, the uh, seven point four inch versus seven inches, um, it's now ninety hertz, and the peak brightness is a thousand nits for that OLED display. Uh, the touchscreen pulling rate is now one hundred eighty and one hundred eighty hertz, uh, improving latency and accuracy. Uh, obviously, they changed some of the other stuff like the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, support for Wi-Fi six E, uh, support for Blue Bluetooth five point three. Uh, as well as some of the newer codecs like aptX HD and aptX low latency. Uh, added the third antenna near the top of the device for better Bluetooth performance, including when docked. Uh, I guess they were having trouble with uh, controllers seeing it and multiple controllers connecting, uh, especially when the device is docked. So uh, adding that third, that third antenna should make a big difference. And uh, add support for wake on Bluetooth controllers. Uh, so if you do have your device docked and you got a, you got your controller near you, uh, you can now wake the device up. So that's a that's a good change. Um, audio has improved bass response for an overall flatter and flatter sound profile. Uh, added support for using onboard microphone array simultaneously with a three and a half millimeter headphone connector. I have to wonder if that's a software update or they had to change the hardware. Uh, I don't know if the L the LCD version is going to have that or not. Uh, but that was that's that seems like an obvious thing that they should have included from day one. Uh, but anyway, um, controls adjusted the analog stick top material and shape for increased grip and dust buildup resistance. Uh, adjusted analog stick post material to improve interaction feel with front cover and reduce wear. Uh, improved reliability of analog stick touch detection. Improved responsibility and tactility of shoulder buttons switch mechanism. Adjusted the defat D pad snap ratio with di and diagonal interactions. Uh, redesigned trackpad for improved fidelity and edge detection. Uh, greatly improved trackpad haptics, feel, and precision. Um, and also, I guess they... Uh, I don't know where that is. Uh, they moved the um, the uh, trigger buttons uh, to the analog stick board, so you can basically replace the whole module, which is an interesting change. Uh, going to power, let's go from... We went from 40 watt hours to 50 watt hours on the OLED. Uh, improved battery ca chemistry for faster charging from 20 to 80 percent in as little as 45 minutes. Uh, they changed the charging LED to uh, WRGB and added support for waking up from initial unboxing by long pressing the power button instead of requiring AC power, uh, which was a weird thing. Like it had to be plugged in in order to turn it on the first time. Uh, I don't know why they did that, and I'm sure there are an awful lot of people that did not read the instructions and. Got real frustrated with that one, but uh, yeah, there you go. Um, adjusted power supply cable length from 1.5 to 2.5 and added a logo to the power supply. So uh, the last thing here is the frame. Uh, reduced total system weight to 640 grams, 5% less than the Steam Deck. Uh, the rear cover th screws are now threaded into metal instead of plastic. Uh, they adjusted the rear cover screw heads to Torx bits, uh, as well as other materials and geometry tweaks on the heads to reduce stripping and risk. Uh, Lowered the number of screw types throughout the system, reduced the step count required for common repairs, improved bumper switch mechanism drop reliability. Oh, uh, here it is. Moved the bumper switch to the joystick board for easier repair and improved display repair replacement to not require taking the rear cover off. Uh, so they did an awful lot of under the hood stuff to improve overall use, but also especially repairability. Um, kind of encouraging you to uh, make your own repairs, which is is nice. Uh, not many people are, are that, are that keen, uh, not many companies are that keen to, uh, let you in the guts of their device to fix it. Um, lastly is the software greatly improved, uh, memory power management firmware, 
added preliminary support for open source BIOS and EC firmware, and improved resume time by roughly 30%. So uh, I think that this added preliminary support for open source BIOS and EC firmware, uh, so that's like a, an initial stage of allowing other handhelds to run SteamOS. Um, so that was the uh, the previous video I did. I was talking about that and uh, why they, they need the OLED team to uh, have some free bandwidth in order to kind of make that work. Uh, so I guess they had actually started and, uh, you know, this is obviously preliminary and they'll be uh, continuing on with that down the road. Um, I just wanted to delve into the specifics, some of the hardware details. Uh, they have these uh, these write-ups on how, uh, on the technical specs of each device and I put them side by side here so we can do some comparisons. Uh, obviously, 6 nanometer APU versus 7. Uh, everything else, though, is the same here. Um, in addition, the, the the memory is the same, 16 gigs uh, LPDDR5. Uh, the only difference is that 6400 mega threads uh, as opposed to 5500. Um, obviously, the storage has changed. Uh, the OLED has 512 gigs and a terabyte, and the old uh, LCD uh, was sold as 64, 256, and 512. And, um, you know, these are going to be basically the, the 64 and the 512 are effectively going away. Uh, where the LCD is still going to remain on the 256 gig. Um, so I guess that's uh, that's going to be while supplies last. You can still get these lower lower and higher LCD models. Uh, aside from that, I mean, effectively, the controls are all essentially the same. Obviously, the display is different, and uh, we can get into that a little bit. Um, obviously, HDR OLED versus the LCD. Uh, same resolution. Uh, it's much brighter at 1,000 nits versus 400. Um, obviously the, uh, the refresh rate is 90 versus 60 and, uh, pretty much everything else is more or less the same, uh, uh, presumably a faster response time, uh, a greater color gambit because of the HDR and, uh, a greater contrast ratio because of the HDR as well. Um, but yeah, this, this display is far superior to the old one. And from what I hear, it is, it is like one of the best displays you can get on a handheld, uh, at this time. Uh, aside from that. Obviously, the ambient light sensor is the same. Connectivity, Bluetooth 5.3 versus 5, and the tri-band Wi-Fi 6E versus the, the Wi-Fi, uh, the dual-band Wi-Fi uh, of the old model. And, uh, and then, again, the audio is uh, effectively the same under the hood, um, but obviously that improved uh, bass response. And uh, that's about it, aside from the, that and the Bluetooth, obviously. Um, let's go into power. Uh, so power, it has uh, a same uh, same connector for the most part, aside from the the increased length and the 50 watt hour battery versus the 40 watt hour. And uh, from what they've they've said, three to 12 hours of gameplay versus that two to eight. Uh, so that is a substantial improvement. And that that's not just the, I mean, obviously that's the the watt hours going up by 10, uh, but also the, all the other performance improvements that they've made, the uh, the the lower nanometer. Uh, makes a big difference on power consumption, uh, as well as some software tweaks that they did under the hood uh, that kind of allow you to stretch your gaming time out much, much further. Uh, so there's uh, there's a, an improvement to the, uh, the frame rate limiter, and uh, that can dramatically change the amount of uh, battery life you have. Uh, so if you start using that, that's a, that's a highly recommended feature in the software. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably how they're getting that 12 hours is uh, using that that frame rate limiting tech uh, in Steam OS. Uh, aside from that, it's effectively the same stuff under the hood. Beyond that, um, you know, USB C up to 8K 60 hertz or 4K 120 hertz uh, USB 3 Gen 2, um, <clears throat> USB C with Display Port 1.4 Alt Mode support up to 8K 60 hertz, uh, 4K 120 hertz. So that's effectively the same. Uh, same micro SD slot. Uh, aside from that, you know, everything else is pretty much the same. So, uh, that is pretty much all the, the details on the hardware changes. Um, let me know what you guys think about this. I mean, obviously it's way more than just a screen swap. And, uh, you know, are you guys going to be interested in buying the, uh, the OLED? Do you, uh, do you have an LCD and you're going to swap up to the OLED or, uh, or are you going to continue on with the LCD? I mean, I kind of think I'm going to continue on with the LCD, uh, just because it's a better target for uh, game development, and I mean, I don't, I don't, I more test my games on it than uh, I actually play games on it these days. 
Uh, so it's actually a better target for me to target that LCD so that I can have something that works well on both platforms as opposed to just the OLED. Uh, and I would imagine that that's going to be the case for other developers as well. So if you do have an LCD, uh, I, I can't imagine devs not targeting it for at least another couple of years until the Steam Deck 2 is out. Um, so you're probably good on that front for quite some time. Uh, and I actually think that's that's the route I'm going to go is stick with the LCD. Uh, I might buy an OLED down the road just to make sure I can, you know, take advantage of that HDR. Um because it is kind of a weird screen. I mean, you know, it's the, the lower resolution combined with the HDR. Uh, I would like to test it, but I would assume that uh, anything I can do HDR HDR wise on a, a full screen, you know, a full size monitor should work the same. But uh, yeah, that's the only reason I would buy an OLED is to just test that screen out. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you going to buy this uh, OLED or are you going to skip it? Um, if you like these kind of videos, give it a like, and if you want to hear more from the perspective of an indie developer, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you guys later.